And welcome to another edition of Defoe on 5. Jeff DeForest along with my uh, longtime partner now, Mr. Mike Luby Lubitz. In fact, I, I don't know that I can function. Uh, you know, I always talk about how can't have a bowel movement without my New York Post, which uh, I was in a battle with my delivery person. They were starting to send me notes, nasty notes on the outside of the wrapping <laughs> in my New York Post, though, on my New York Post delivery. And uh, I think I won because uh, now they're sending this thing uh, to me very early in the morning, which is great. Two pages on Rick Pitino uh, that I was uh, reading with great joy this morning, although uh, there are a lot of Pitino detractors out there which is kind of weird. I, I mean, I guess it's understandable, right? Because, uh, you know, if you don't know the person, if you hadn't had a chance to uh, be around him, and there are many con men that are very charming. Yes. One got elected president, right? I don't know that he was yes. particularly charming, but he managed to, uh, you know, fool a lot of people. I, I, I don't know that Rick Pitino, uh, when you meet him, Luby, do you sense at all that he's not a genuine person? No, it's annoying because I grew up not liking Rick Pitino just because he had that smarmy, men smarmy aura to him. And then we've spent a lot of time with him and that ruined that. <laughs> like, it's funny, too, because uh, the perception was that uh, George Steinbrenner, and I'm sure in many ways he was exactly what people perceived him to be, and that, that was a, just a real uh, dick. I mean, you're just uh, an egomaniacal, uh, you know, a kind of person that uh, was ready to crush people like a grape at any turn and would do anything for his own success and happiness. But uh and, and Patino, uh, I kind of met through horse racing also, although uh, I got to be uh, a little closer to Patino. Well, I wouldn't say I was close with him, but uh, what we had uh, many good conversations with him uh, through our association with the lovely and talented one, uh, Leslie Visser, and uh, also uh, at one time his golfing partner there, the Duke, who was married to Leslie uh, at that time. And it's weird because uh, Steinbrenner, when, when you met him away from the whole Yankee scene and the publicity and New York and all of the stuff that uh, he was generating when he was the owner of the Yankees, was like a completely different guy, real down to earth. I'll never forget the day that he made a deal with us for advertising. We, we, we couldn't sell a single spot on this horse racing show. And we go to Ocala to try and uh, do some kind of massive marketing campaign to see if we can't get a few sponsors. And one of the few guys that responded was Steinbrenner who met us, uh, he owned the Ramada Inn, which was like the only hotel there at the time. He, he met us there, made a deal with us uh, on a napkin. And then after uh, writing us a check for the uh, nominal amount of money we were looking for, it was like $2,500 for the year to advertise on this program. Uh, he uh, gave us the check and he says, uh, I don't know what this is for, but you guys seem like good people. So here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Patino, very affable in, in the same way. I mean, uh, you know, if you weren't grilling him, he, he, even when you were talking to him about uh, the controversies, he, he holds up pretty well. Yeah, well, and wrote a book about it, but uh, gets to St. John's job. We'll get to that. And uh, we have a huge day planned also on our uh, show on South Florida Live, the Defoe show on South Florida Live with Mike Luby Lubitz says uh, you, you have done a, an unbelievable job. You have one eighth of the coaches that are involved in the Sweet 16 coming on the same show. We do. That's impressive, my friend. I mean, when we were on Radio Row, I didn't know that we were going to get this kind of steam when we were at the final four. Uh, we did uh, end up talking to a lot of college coaches uh, and college basketball coaches in particular yes. are among the most fascinating of people to speak with. Uh, they're very uh, intellectual, very eloquent, uh, total recall of everything that happened in their career uh, going all the way back to grade school. Yep. And uh, j just, uh, you know, very, very entertaining conversations that, that we had uh, it was enlightening, I think, even for you and me. I mean, I've been doing this forever and uh, I still remember. That was, what, uh, 2017, maybe 16, that we were in Houston for the Final Four. Syracuse was in there, and that was North Carolina, Villanova. Yep. In, in a thriller in Manila uh, out in Houston, Texas. Uh, I mean, you couldn't have asked for a more spectacular finish to uh, the season. And that was where uh, Villanova goes down, and Michael Jordan's jumping up and down in the stands yeah, there. Uh, North Carolina finally takes the lead, and then they execute this uh, beautiful play at the end of the game and uh, hit a shot at the buzzer to uh, win the ball game and win the national championship for uh, Jay Wright, which uh, Jay Wright's knocking it out of the park right now as a uh, broadcaster, impressing a lot of people uh, with his analysis on the games. Is that because the other guys are afraid to say anything, or uh, just that you would have – you know, a sense that, that he would know what, what he's talking about. Jay Wright, the former Villanova coach who uh, did such good things there. And uh, I, I don't know, did he retire prematurely? It looks like he still has some coaching shelf life. Uh, anyway, uh, a lot of different things that happened. And it, it was another spectacular night. I mean, we had the welcoming committee for the University of Miami. Luby has booked a monster show for you on the uh, Depot show later on. We'll have both Dusty May and Jim Laranega on the program. One-eighth of the Sweet 16 uh, coaching 
uh, Arsenal is going to be with us here, and uh, that, that's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to both of those conversations. Grant Long is also going to join us on the show. But um, I go all the way back to, like, 1992 now, Luby, and there's a reason for it. Uh, and you're going to think, uh, why don't you just deal with the present, Tifo? <laughs> all you want to do is talk about the distant past. This is over 30 years ago. Hard to imagine. Yeah, and is. I remember uh, it, it was not easy doing the U.M. basketball games that year. I was uh, calling games with Sonny Hirsch. And Sonny had a ritual, which, uh, you know, I mean, it was basically like, uh, okay, you got the halftime show, kid. Because the halftime show during Hurricane basketball games at that time was, uh, yeah, there wasn't a whole lot to review. Uh, let's see. We got Norris with two on one for nine from the floor. Edwards, uh, let's see. He didn't score. Stevie Frazier, uh, he was carted off the floor there. After, I mean, it was tough. And, and, you know, you're losing to uh, Northern Illinois at home by 30 points at halftime. There wasn't a whole lot to get into at halftime. So you were hoping maybe to have some kind of interesting halftime guest. And Sonny would walk off and go to the press room to go get whatever food was available. And uh, essentially, you know, like just like slam the headphones down and discuss because he probably had bet the Hurricanes and then say, it's all yours, kid. So uh, sauntering over to the desk, almost as a matter of routine, would be the former UM athletic director and may rest in peace. He was a real good guy to me. And uh, I think people really liked Paul D when he was the athletic director of the University of Miami. The football team was prospering and uh, he tried his best to continue in the spirit of Sam Jankovic and do what he could with the basketball team. Leonard Hamilton was the coach. And I always dreaded the moment when uh, Paul D would come up to me and say, uh, could you interview Fern Labonte at halftime uh, today? Fern Labonte was the coach of the women's team, and, and nobody gave a flying one about women's college basketball at that time. And yet, the reason I bring up this 1992, that was the last time that the Hurricane women's basketball team, Luby, was in the Sweet 16 of the NCAA Jeez. tournament. Wow. 31 years ago was the last time they were there, and they did it last night, and this was great. I, I watched uh, mostly because, well, two reasons. Our friend Jim Sarney shamed me into it. <laughs> and uh, the irony that they were also playing Indiana. Now, Indiana was ranked, uh, I think they finished the season, the regular season or whatever, after the tournaments. Uh, they were ranked third in the country behind South Carolina, which is a juggernaut. And yeah. uh, like a thousand uh, you know, to one, you have to lay a thousand to one to win a dollar uh, if you bet them to win the national championship. They're undefeated. Don Staley, uh, excellent coach. And uh, she, she's had tremendous success there and uh, kind of is the modern day Yukon and uh, Tennessee. Yes. At this stage, I mean, they've been dynamite for a couple of years and look to be unbeatable. They're winning their games with like 30, 40 points in the early rounds of the tournament. Uh, Iowa is the number two team in the country, and uh, they have uh, Caitlin Clark, who is one of the outstanding uh, basketball players on the uh, women's ledger. And uh, it really is uh, a lot of fun to watch. Uh, if you're, you know, and, and we've said this before, even though a lot of people think that we're sexist and misogynistic and not <laughs> analyzing more women's sports. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just not mainstream. I, I, you know, they, you have to be honest about it. I, I know the women get involved. I mean, the crowd last night at Indiana was really into the game. Women were weeping as they were leaving the arena because the Hurricanes pulled off a nearly impossible upset. And the game was just insane, Luby. It wasn't quite uh, like watching the men versus Indiana, but uh, it, it had all of the drama that you could possibly drum up in a basketball game. And when you saw what it meant to these uh, players and the coaches, Katie Meyer, I mean, uh, was, I mean, she, she just absolutely was beside herself with joy after this ball game, making a sweet 16. And uh, I have to say that the Cavender uh, twins are, are impressive athletes in addition Wasn't to being uh, social media stars. Yeah. I, I mean, they, they weren't overwhelmingly, uh, you know, I, they, they were steadying factors for the hurricane, good ball handlers, hustled on defense. I mean, really, really athletic. And uh, well, one of the uh, twins, I'm not sure which one. Is it Holly and Haley? I'm not sure what I the names are. I just know that they do twin tricks, and that's why they're famous on TikTok. I've never seen them. Very before. famous and came here uh, supposedly on some kind of million-dollar name, image, and likeness deal yes. from that Ruiz cat. Yes. So, um, you know, that, that was, uh, you know, impressive to, to see them out there actually looking like athletes and not just uh, social media stars. Uh, there were a couple of key buckets uh, made by one of the uh, Cavender twins. She had a big three, and uh, the same girl is like a 90% free throw shooter and knocked down a couple of big free throws at the end of the game. In fact, free throws were, were very significant for the Hurricanes because they were hanging by a thread, Luby. This was one of those games where, where you're way up. They, they were up 13 at halftime and then they have a horrendous and horrendous third quarter. They get outscored in the third quarter 19-8. to 
Oh, uh, only a little bit of a brick-like tendency coming from Indiana kept them in the game at all. Uh, otherwise, it would have been a runaway by Indiana. And then it went back and forth in, in the fourth quarter, and uh, it was about as dramatic a finish as you could ask for. With six seconds to go, Kane's up three. Lady Kane's up three. 6.6 seconds to go. A freshman for Indiana, who is uh, their best three-point shooter, nails a three from long range. I mean, uh, this was uh, you know uh, indicative of anything James Harden would have put up. And uh, speaking of Harden, it was Destiny Harden, aptly named Destiny Harden, who uh, went ahead and, and completed the uh, Hurricanes' destiny by making an inside basket with three seconds to go. The Canes hold on. They win it 70-68. to 68. And so uh, they're marching on to the Sweet 16, knocked off the number three team in the country in the process. I think a Canes, uh, Lady Canes money line bet. Oh, that's real sickness now. I mean, are you kidding me, Depot? Can you imagine? There's probably somebody out there that's making a killing betting women's basketball because they really know the game. <laughs> they were 14 and a half point dogs last night in that game against Indiana. And they had to play in Indiana. This isn't one of those regional things. Uh, they, they actually play home games, the uh, higher seeds. Yep, yep, yep. So, uh, yeah, they, they were playing in Bloomington and uh, ended up coming with, up with the uh, win. So congratulations are in order. And the first time since 92, since those dreadful Fern Labonte interviews. She, she was a very nice woman and obviously a very good coach. She was there for a long, long time. But, man, I, I used to dread that. I, 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 was, I was hearing radios click off. It was hard enough to get people to listen to Hurricane basketball anyway on the radio. And now they're taking, I, I guess I saw a story this morning, a little flash where, uh, and this has been coming for a while, no more AM radios in cars. That's it? Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a thing that's... Um, I don't know if it's being talked about. I think it's just known. Like, new cars won't have AM. No AM radios. Huh? still have AM radio stations, so I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Uh, well, I'm glad we're out of it because uh, we're, we're coming into our own here. My horoscope is indicating that uh, we're going to be making some big moves. Uh, all right, so uh, that was great. Uh, and, uh, you know, Sarnia naturally was ripping you, saying that uh, you didn't catch a second of it. But uh, you did miss a, a, a very dramatic finish and, and a thrilling victory by the uh, Lady Hurricanes yesterday. So we wanted to send our congratulations uh, out to them. The uh, Florida Panthers uh, finally made their way into a playoff position. I don't know that that's going to last. They're, they're one point ahead of the Pittsburgh Penguins now. Penguins lose last night. Cats win. Uh, they have been rolling. The, the French Joe Philbin is starting to uh, you know, actually do some good. And, sure. and you could make the case, Luby, uh, is this, I'm, I'm trying to think, what would rival this? And we were talking about it with Brett Tesler on our show yesterday, the Defoe show on uh, South Florida Live, uh, which uh, you, you can uh, tune into. And today would be a good one not to miss. Uh, e even I'm looking forward to uh, doing a show today. Can you believe it, Louie? After uh, 50 years in the business, I'm excited that we're going to have both Dusty May and Jim Laranego on the same program here. Is, uh, is Dusty May writing a Cinderella story? I mean, they were a nine seed. Is that still you qualify as Cinderella at a nine seed? Yeah. Certainly, if they knock off Tennessee, they become Cinderella. That that glass slipper starts to uh, look like it's gonna, you know, maybe be a size fifteen and fit fit the big guy. Uh, Dusty May, uh, very good story, and uh, Jim Laranega is always a pleasure. I mean, just uh, I I could talk with this guy about anything all day long and be happy about it. So uh, that that's coming up uh, a little bit later on. But uh, speaking of coaches, I mean, we we were knocking this guy, this Paul Maurice, uh, who uh, well, was a very nondescript hire, and we we labeled him the French Joe Philbin. Because, um, you know, after games, he was just like, eh, well, you know what? We lost. We gave up three goals in a third period. But the other team was better tonight. And uh, I don't know what we're going to do. But but it's starting to look like. And uh, he had a goal, I guess, uh, in a game last night against Detroit. Uh, uh, Matt Kachuk. Ooh. Is that is that the best lopsided favorable trade for a South Florida team that, that maybe has been made? It has to rank up there. I mean, Hoover Doe and some other guys. I mean, I guess, you know, there, there was another player involved and some draft picks. But essentially, Huberdo for uh, Matt Kachuk. Well, look, and you said it yesterday. I didn't realize Kachuk double, and that's the thing. He's known as a scorer who can assist. Huberdo is known as a guy that does everything. Huberdo has like 40-something points this year. Kachuk has over 90. Yeah. <laughs> well, Huberdo is a tremendous passer. Uh, he was a John Stockton, uh, Magic Johnson uh, of Kachuk hockey passers. More. I think Kachuk has more assists than him this year. Like uh, That's surprising. Yeah. Him out of the water. Because, uh, you know, certainly you weren't expecting Huberto to get in the middle of a bunch of fights and, uh, you know, provide that element of toughness that the Panthers thought they were missing. So if you were looking to uh, correct a lot of flaws that the team appeared to have when they very uh, softly went out 
against the Tampa Bay Lightning in uh, four straight games in the playoffs last year, and, and you saw them sputtering uh, when the moment of truth came, uh, even in the series against the Capitals after having a sensational regular season, uh, you, you would have to say that uh, this deal, uh, I mean, what would rival that in terms of lopsided? Put it this way. Uh, Huberto has like 14 goals and 30-something assists. Yeah. Kachuk has 32 goals and 60 assists. It's amazing. He doubled him, and he's not known for the assist. To be Plus, the he's assist. punched like eight guys in the face, where Huberto <laughs> would have 0.0 <laughs> in that category. <laughs> Huberto's one of those guys that uh, you, you got to call like Ty Domi back out on the ice there to protect the kid. <laughs> Kachuk can take care of himself. A menacing presence there. And, uh, you know, I, you, you would like to see your team take on the persona of a player like that. And, and maybe some of that is happening late in the season. Anyway, they, they sneak ahead by a single point with about this. I think they have the same number of games to go. Uh, both have 12 games left in the season, uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins. And there are other teams kind of hovering like they around that spot. Islanders, but it seems like they're way behind everyone else. Maybe so. I, I don't know. But that, that was a, a good development. Yes. Um, I was reading an article real quickly here, uh, reseeding the uh, Sweet 16. Okay. You know, the bottom four teams are in the reseeding of the Sweet 16. Now I'm talking about 13, 14, 15, and 16. Mm-hmm. They have Miami at 13, San Diego State at 14, FAU at 15, Princeton at 16. Miami uh, being, uh, you know, completely overlooked here. But they're, all, they're already seeded. I don't understand. No, but I'm saying uh, this was a theoretic, you know, theoretical thing if you reseeded the tournament now. In the Sweet 16, who, who would the top teams be? They have Bama, Houston, UCLA, and uh, UConn. So that's not, no, that's not. Houston hasn't played well at all. Like, are they resetting it on how they played? or? Uh, they? I guess based on uh, who, who the best teams are. Well, Houston so, struggled. Miami's out. Miami dominated their second uh, second game. Houston has struggled in both games. Yeah. I, I, I was uh, sort oh, of surprised to see that. They have Miami behind Michigan State. And Princeton dominated their second game. Like I don't. Tennessee care. was very shaky. They were lucky to get out of their first game. As was Miami, though. Miami looked uh, horrible in their first yeah, game and still won. Dominated either. That's what I'm saying. Tennessee and Houston have struggled in both games. That's why people think Miami is it Miami or FAU. One of them, FAU plays Tennessee. Whoever plays Tennessee, people think have a good shot at winning. Yeah. Because Tennessee, yeah, they they play Tennessee. FAU plays Tennessee. Yeah, and Miami plays Houston. The two teams that have struggled mightily in both games. Like that's a weird. Re- that's just hating. Like, that's not even accurate. Like No, that's a guy that uh, had to come up with an article. They probably said, hey, look, we need 16 inches of copy right now. Yeah. And he put that together. Anyway, I, I used it uh, as a reference point. It's interesting, but it's wrong. That guy's wrong. Like, I, what would be interesting is to put Princeton and Miami over a Houston and Tennessee. That would yeah. be interesting. You're reseeding. World Baseball Classic comes down to uh, USA and Japan. Japan walks sure. off against Mexico last night. So, uh, I don't know. Will Otani pitch? Oh, God. You think against uh, the U.S. team? It's Trey Turner's been dynamite, man. I wish the Marlins had acquired him. He's the only guy I've seen besides uh, Giancarlo Stanton who can hit home runs mm. at Lone Shark Park. He uh, had uh, three in, a, in two games uh, earlier in a tournament. And, and a, a defector, Prieto Gonzalez, a catcher for yes, the Cuban yes, team, yes. Whoosh, no show at the airport, which, uh, I, I, I mean, I have great respect for that. That, that takes some pause, does it not? Those defections don't come necessarily without a lot of strings attached. Just ask UCL Puig, well, exactly. who uh, has disappeared. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to uh, see you guys on uh, South Florida Live. Uh, you, you can become a subscriber there. We love having you guys on Five Reasons Sports Network. Uh, I would imagine we'll also uh, offer up uh, maybe our Dusty May and Jim Laranega interviews to uh, Five Reasons Sports Network later on in the day. But you can catch them live, 7 to 9, on South Florida Live. For Mike Luby Lewis, I'm Jeff DeForest. And that's uh, this uh, day's edition of Defoe on 5.